There we go. Recorded in progress. Excellent. Thank you very much for being here. My pleasure. It's so nice to speak. Um, we've known each other for a couple, two and a half ish years now, haven't we? Or a little bit more? Maybe three, nearly three, actually. Could be. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> and you very kindly and graciously guided me through the workbook for over two years. Thank you for being here. You know, it, it, it's it's nice to know that there are people out there who are finding my passion helpful, you know, because I, I can't imagine now not doing these daily videos, although it was very uh, daunting at first when I got the idea that I should do it. But like so many things in my life, and especially concerned with my spiritual path, I sort of felt like I was being uh, told, okay, do this now. Now, this is time. It's time to do this. And um, and I guess I'm, I am at least obedient to follow that voice. <laughs> I think I had a similar experience a little while ago before I sent you the article to ask your opinion on how it came across. Yeah, it was good. It was very good. Well, that's high praise. And um, I had a moment on the doorstep in the morning with a cup of coffee and looking at the clouds and um, a, a, a clear sense of like, this is the start. Mm. And kind of like what I alluded to before of kind of stepping out from the music. So um, the music's always been informed by my love of the course, but I've kind of done it almost surreptitiously or secretly whatever the right kind of word is and used an ambiguity of talking about love so that somebody could say well this could be the love between a couple or someone and their parent or a friend or an animal or god or da -da -da, without pinning it down to one definition right well, right now it's like I, like i said to you I feel like i'm going to go to a an aa meeting and go hello my name's leon and I believe in God. I love God. <laughs> it, you know, the message, the truth is given to us in so many different forms. And it's not just in one way because there isn't one way that will impact and everyone will agree to. And so there is the, the message of the course, the message of truth, certainly the message of love. We find it in music for sure we find it in television we find it in movies we we find it eking into our life in so many ways but for me until I became you know a core student I didn't see it now I go oh my gosh I saw the movie the Gra Groundhog Day the first time and oh it's a, it's a great movie but then after studying the course I'm going this is a course in miracles and the same thing with the Truman, the Truman Show with Jim Carrey. It's like, this is A Course in Miracles. He is there and he's the only one who doesn't know the truth about what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. And, and of course, Jim Carrey, I, I did not know. I don't know if he was then, but he's a very spiritual person now. Oh, he's, yeah, yeah. So it's um, it, it makes perfect sense. I saw him. He was speaking uh, introduction. I it was either for Rupert Spira or for Eckhart Tolle, but mm -hmm. he was at one of their um, conventions, you know, gatherings, and he was uh, one of the one of the speakers for in introducing. So he's yeah. I love what he says and I love his perspective and I also think he's incredibly brave because um, of the way he was, uh, for want of another word, kind of crucified on the red carpet because outside movie premieres and stuff when when it was cracking and breaking open for him, you know, he was speaking as freely as we might speak um, en masse to like everybody and obviously all of the people, it's like the Plato saying about um, the people who are dancing to the music that the others can't hear are considered to be mad. Right. 
And I thought it was really, really brave of him to do that, whether he realised what he was doing or knew he had an option, but he's become a really lovely, gentle person and his qualification is like, look, if you think you're one of these millions of people who are aspiring for the greatest gifts and goals the world's got to offer, take it from me. They don't nourish you on the proper level that you're looking for. Do you know Gabor Mate? Oh, I love Gabor Mate. Oh, I discovered him um, last year, I think. Right. And I just love listening to him. He is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I love the, his use of the word compensation and how he um, uses that as an umbrella term to explain addiction because um, like addictions affected our family directly through my dad. And um, the interesting thing about Gabo Mate was like he was addicted to buying classical music on vinyl, but he made no distinction between that addiction and someone who's addicted to exercise or alcohol or drugs or sex or junk food or anything and he kind of had this blanket term to say it's just compensation you're looking outside yourself for something and you will get a hit a bit like Rupert Spire actually interesting you mentioned him because he said you will get a hit you will get that little bit of fireworks which in a sense affirms that you're looking in a place where you can get what you want but right. then a little hit will die off won't it and then it'll be another one and another one and another one and ultimately you need to look within which we might have heard a little bit about in that certain book yeah. <laughs> um, i mean in truth we're all addicted everyone is addicted i mean if, if we don't think we're addicted to anything else we're addicted to this this body we're addicted to it yeah. you know we're not most of us not willing to give it up, you know, and uh, spend a lot of time um, enhancing it one way or the other. So, you know, they, it's, we all have some addiction, even if it's, you know, not one that is illegal uh, as, as the, the world looks at, uh, looks upon it. You know, we, we all have something that we're addicted to or we wouldn't still be here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I could even be addicted to A Course in Miracles. <laughs> forget this course. Right, forget this world. <laughs> so we're on your favorite lesson today, aren't we, 185? 185, yes. Yeah. yes. I want the peace of God. <laughs> Nothing else. Are you addicted to it, then? Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> addicted to the peace of God. <laughs> My best one. <laughs> yeah. Give me another spoonful. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not enough. I want more. I want more. <laughs> I've got enough of it. <laughs> yeah, I hope 186 is the same lesson. Otherwise, I'm putting this book down. Oh. <laughs> no, it's a different lesson. Salvation of the world depends on me. No pressure. <laughs> I was interested because yesterday's lesson was really... Um, poignant and pertinent for me because um you read me the the bit from i think 186 or 187 about formless um, oh, that's in uh that's in tomorrow's lesson about the, the formlessness yeah. yes and that, that was really beautiful and powerful obviously um but yesterday's lesson was really pertinent because i realized by default in a sense by watching a movie funnily enough um thread from uh, what you were mentioning that I was missing a kind of scientific kind of aspect to my spirituality which I hadn't realized it was a piece of a jigsaw that really sort of embellished the whole picture for me and maybe my the left brain aspect of my seemingly male existence was uh, catered for with this um information which kind of like stretched my understanding it sort of um it took the neighborhood that i live in and and expanded it to a point where once i'd look through a telescope at jupiter and the moons and saturn then now i had to like consider that they were i was part of that 
neighborhood kind of thing and I think you know like we were saying about revisiting the course and about it being a living document and it expanding to a, encompass our understanding um, to read yesterday's lesson it really does um, it really does use all of that kind of information to sort of the great effect really for me and how I read it and interpret it you know it affirms I'm not sure if it was Carl Sagan who said um to view spirituality and science as two different entities does a disservice to both yes um and I, I don't know also you know Einstein was very much into spirituality and so many of his quotes are you know pertinent to using and i i've used some of them in uh mm -hmm. in the teachings because i don't think that anyone who has an expansive mind can can make a distinction that this is this is science and this is spirituality we have to see the blending of everything because there is a blending of everything again there's no separation there's no separation. There's no separation between you and I. We think that we're in two separate locations right now, <laughs> but we're not really. We're really right next to each other, and there is no distinction of where I end and you begin or where you begin or you end and your wife is. I mean, it's all oneness, and that, I think, is also a frightening idea to very many people because they like their individuality, and they, they really... They may say, oh, there's no such thing as separateness, but in truth, they really like to be separate. They they like to think, you know, I, I can encave, I can go away, I can retreat. Mm -hmm. And the truth is we we can't really. You know, we're we're just trying to do a disservice to who we really are. Yeah, because the part of the mind that wants to maintain and continue the separate self is going to be scared by the context with which it fits into oneness how, how can a separate self perceive how it fits in in oneness it can't really can it it can't and you know we we are still in this experience in this world we still continue to have levels and we have the ideas of levels of what is more tragic than something else like if someone passes, someone makes their transition, but it's a child, it's much more tragic than if it's an 86-year-old. Mm -hmm. uh, we see that as all being different. We have assigned different um, functions and different uh, characteristics to everyone. So mm -hmm. we, and, you know, it's more tragic if a person passes than it is if I'm driving down the road and I see a dead raccoon mm. you know no no it's all the same it's all life mm. it's all living things and that's like you know one of my favorite phrases that I mention whenever it comes up in the lesson all living things and that's that's an idea that I don't know that we're all ready or really understand that there is no difference to the 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 lizard that is living on my back porch <laughs> than me or you mm -hmm. you know we are all come out of creation we all have life and we all have life because of god mm -hmm. and so we are all one mm -hmm. does that make sense i'm always asking it that. does yeah because what it's making me think of is like um <clears throat> when it when we have the the thought that says um there's no order of difficulty to miracles right equally there's one that's there's no one no uh, bigger or harder yeah yeah there's no is it to do with illusions there's a sim there's a similar principle when they're talking about there's no there's no there's no order of illusions not that wording but oh, right it, it, because it, it's all it is all the same and you know the illusion is like just the opposite of our our miracle if you yeah. would have right seeing so in our right seeing but again we think that one miracle is not equal to the other 
Mm -hmm. No, there's there's no difference. And there's no difference in our illusions. Again, you just said either. You know, one isn't bigger, more important than the other. They are all equal because every (laughs) illusion simply takes away our attention. It is a distraction. So it can be a minor distraction or it can be a very large distraction, depending on how we interpret it and how we uh, embody it and, you know, uh, feel it's how important it is to us. Right. So how much we pin on it in a sense. Yeah. And we know that with the course, we get this beautiful sort of expressed understanding of no degrees which you know, I know in my own personal journey, the, the benefit of that understanding was as big as the understanding of being able to disassociate myself from the ego. So I remember as like, a, say, a late teen, being the part of a social group where people would come and they'd ask me for advice. And then afterwards I'd do, oh, yeah, that was all right, you know. And, uh, you know, people like what I've got to say. And then yeah. let's say like an hour later or the next day, you're, you're oh, very annoyed about something. So then my ego go, oh, yeah, look at you. You know, one minute you're giving it out. And now, you, you know, and I couldn't reconcile that until The Course of Miracles showed me, dude, diddle da diddle da And I was like, oh. and the freedom, there's, there's so many freedoms for me with The Course of like, rigidity and false ideas and the degrees thing was massive it's like there's no small upsets isn't it lesson five it's like how powerful is that and how freeing are all these things and and I know that you also had like you told me your dad was Jewish and your mum was Catholic so there must have been freeing even more freeing aspects than just the ideas in the course I I feel that my mm, there's absolutely no accidents, <laughs> and you know the 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 idea in the course that you cannot but be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. And learning that, and really learning that, and accepting that, makes me look at everything that has happened up until the time that the course came into my life as this was just one thing after another that was giving me experience so that when the course came into my life, I was going to be able to receive it. Like I was a theater major. Mm -hmm. So that brought me to the ability to be able to be and teach and be in front of a class or to do the videos because I have a, a comfortability now if that's a word, you know, in being able to stand in front of a group. And um, so it's like every little thing, when I look back on it now, oh, that may, oh, yeah, that, mm -hmm, okay, I see. You know, like even the completion of my marriage to, as I call him, the baby daddy, because um, I've been married more than once. Mm -hmm. Uh, And because if I had stayed in that marriage, the course never would have come to me. That had to be complete in order for this next phase of my development to happen. Mm. You know, and again, that's like when it was when I was in the middle of it, it was it was very painful. Mm. You know, it, it was like, you know, why is this happening kind of thing? But then giving the perspective of having the course come into my life right afterwards, right after all of that. I mean. Uh, the same year that the divorce was final, almost the same month, the course came to me. So it was like, okay, now I, you know, it, it gives me clarity mm-hmm. on so much that has happened. And um, and so it also is, it's very freeing that, you know, it, it takes away any grievance about old situations nope they were absolutely supposed to unfold exactly like that that. yeah and and when we can get into a space i call it a space of neutrality you know there's the lesson that my body is a wholly neutral thing Mm -hmm. but coming into a space when we are okay no matter what 
So if I make plans with you and you cancel, okay. Mm -hmm. If we make plans together and then we go out or we go to the show or, you know, go to the party or whatever. Okay. But yeah. it, there's no disappointment in either direction. It's all exactly as it's supposed to be. So if there's no disappointment, there's, there's no grievance that I'm taking on to, you know, um, to hold on to and to now have to forgive. <laughs> yeah, because it's like holding up a, a blueprint or something. I sometimes say to people, you know, imagine uh, you've woken up in the morning, you haven't opened the curtains yet, and you've decided what you want the weather to be like mm -hmm. then you open the curtains and if it doesn't match your requirement you're then going to judge that weather right. condition you're going right. to assign an emotion and effects and consequent you know whereas next door a guy might open the curtains and he's happy because yeah. it means he doesn't have to dig a trench in his garden or <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's interesting because Although that stuff you could say directly was preparing you to receive the course, it's also an experience of faith because mm -hmm. with faith, if you take out pinpointing what it is you believe in, the, the concept of faith itself is like today will make sense tomorrow. I have a, a saying in my flip book with, of Janet isms, which hopefully will go to the printer by next week. I have to go through that one more time. Um, faith is not knowing. That's what faith is. Wow. Faith is when I don't know. Because hmm. um, <clears throat> again, talking about the benefits of the course in practical terms, in the 3D, here we are in the illusion neck deep it's like uh, a couple of weeks ago I was in a situation where my work normally is projected ahead of me like six or eight weeks and it had come down to like two and I was like okay don't worry I was leasing a van that I'd had for three years and there was no word yet as to whether I could get an extension and because of all of the things going on in the world um the the new policies were like unrecognizable financially to the one that I took out. And then there was another issue as well with settling up um, some payments. And all these things were potentially amassing to hit me in the middle of July, say, and, and, and effectively in your mind, if you want to get run away with the sort of sense of the negative way this could manifest you could literally think oh my god everything could li like fall apart and it's like no 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 keep faith and in my mind I was really careful to like just envisage one outcome you know I'm thinking no 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 what, say the van it's like right I'm gonna get this um lease extended for one year I'm gonna get this and I wouldn't entertain the idea that there was anything to vacillate between this is just the one thing that's gonna happen right. And then on the Thursday, I decided to deal with the payments and I set that up and I just felt amazing. On the Friday, I received the email in the first thing in the morning say the van's going to carry on for another year. Um, and then also, um, I am transitioning to change careers and somebody phoned me up with essentially like a job interview on the Friday, as I was getting ready to um, travel up to London to do a concert with the band. And then some people spoke to me about work and all of us, and just, but I kept the faith for that difficult experience, you know, on paper, did all my course, put all my course stuff into practice, did my lessons, did I do, breathe, you know, and just asking and deferring. And again, what came to mind when you were saying about, being happy with the neutrality of does it or doesn't it also expectation because a lot of people are saying oh you've got this gig in london there's a part of london called camden which is just like really cool funky area where historically loads of great things have happened in the music business mm. and history uh oh you're gonna you know and, and i had to like not 
paint any expectations on that as well and just allow it to be what it was in much the same principle that came to mind when you were saying about be equally happy with either outcome. And I think these are all parts of faith. And again, that lovely, I, I like it almost as like a cup of tea and sit down and look back at a sequence and think, God, because I met them, that took me to there. And then, I, and I love to do that from this point, the right. illusion of linear time trace it back and go wow you know it's a, it's a beautiful thing yeah definitely definitely and you know the perspective is so different you know but and then of course you know the course says that we've already completed the journey we're we're looking back on it and you know but we're already home so we're just you know having fun reliving or not what where we have already been and how we're our journey has taken us and how it brought us home. So it's, that's always, uh, I find that always interesting. Yeah. The wonderful um, metaphor that we can almost pretend to understand. <laughs> we get it, but it's like, pff, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever struggled with the um, masculine um, sort of terminology, the classical Christian, ter does that bother you ever or not? really um it, well initially the christ word the c word you mm. know um was a little daunting because um you know i had most recently been jewish mm. <laughs> and very jewish when i was married to the baby daddy his name is mark um we were very involved he was very involved in the local uh, synagogue and uh you know we went to services all the time and you know uh, raised the kids Jewish and all of that so uh, initially the the c word was like ooh, the hair on the back of my neck went up a little bit but one of the things and I it was in uh, Marianne Williamson's book Return to Love and um, and I had my uh, <laughs> the sequence was I read uh, Journey Without Distance Return to Love and then got my course book um and in Return to Love, she talks about, because also she's Jewish, uh, that, you know, it's it's not Christ, the it's the, the consciousness. And so we can use the Buddha consciousness, the Abraham consciousness, the Moses, the Allah. It's that the higher level of consciousness. And as soon as I accepted that, then it was fine. Okay. And um you know, and then, of course, in, in the book, very often it says child of God. Mm -hmm. And I often use child of God instead of son of God because mm -hmm. of a lot of women mm -hmm. come put off with it, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, and I've, I've had people, you know, comment on the, um, on the daily videos that thanking me for using child of God. Right. Um, very mm -hmm. interesting comments I get. Yeah, because language is alive, isn't it? Yeah. Language is, is alive and we... There's something I respect about the honouring the kind of traditional Christian Trinitarian model that it's based upon. And like we've already spoken between one another, we didn't have the hang-ups as such of the word God and stuff to get past. Again, just because it's not pin the tail on the donkey you're not trying to right you're not trying to engage like it says in the course doesn't it we just say god is and then we cease to speak because there's no lips there's no you don't bother going there you don't bother trying to explain love you don't these things just are and um often reminds me like picasso lived all those years and he went through all of those phases and he he had like a, a life as a painter which spanned let's say six or seven decades and their most intelligent conclusion that he could come to from all of that learning was he would like to get back to painting the way he did as a small child yeah. without the involvement of the intellect and considered thought just yeah and, and that always like rings true for me in the terms of like god is love is and just right just right don't need to go there you don't you know the whole act of making any attempt to define it is is not really 
of any value to me, but I don't think you arrive at that feeling immediately. So you have to kind of think about people who start off right at the beginning and these things just don't mean what they should mean. And they've got to get past all of this historical terminology. Right. And, and a lot is very dependent upon their previous religious training. Hmm. Um, the group I have at the Pride Center, the LGBT Center, yeah. there are several of people who are, they say they're, you know, recovering Baptists. And the word, <laughs> the word <laughs> salvation really is a trigger for them. Right. So I have often um, substituted the word freedom for salvation because salvation is freedom and that they can accept. And it doesn't, you know, bring back old memories and fire and brimstone preachers and things like that. So it's it, 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 language is a living thing, as you said, and it's just that and words are tools and at best and very often inadequate mm. so we get to use them to the best of our ability and it needs to be fluid enough that the word itself can change without changing or minimizing the the truth behind the words mm. so and i think if it was she you know from my perspective if they if all the pronouns were feminine i don't think i would struggle with it but it's an interesting question to ask because I know you do work out of the Pride Centre and I know from being one of your followers and students on the workbook that um, there's a large female um, contingent in what you do. And most of, Yes, most of the, uh, the analytics of the videos and who watches, and it's mostly women. Yeah. But yeah, that's not surprising in a way, is it? Um, do you know Keith Kavanagh? He's an Irish chap. Um, I don't know the name's familiar, but I'm not sure. Really beautiful, gentle man, and he he's got um, some insights from his statistics that he posted, and and again, it was like something eighty seven percent women or something, and it doesn't surprise me because there's something. You, the, a lot of the guys who are into the course aren't, you know, testosterone driven <laughs> men, are they? You know, they they have a leaning towards the sensitivity of yeah material. Well, most of the men that come to my classes are gay. Okay. Yeah, like very, very few straight men. I've mm. one or two, but not not many, mm. and. Um, yeah, and and it's fine, and it's it's wonderful, and I'm happy to that I'm accepted by uh, gay men as a straight woman. You know, there's a mm, there's a comfortability in a way, and also I've been told I have mom energy. So a lot of gay men either had a very bad relationship with their mother, or they're very close to their mothers. Mm -hmm. and so I, I provide that interim there. Mm. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, amazing. So we've got three minutes and 50 seconds left. Um, uh, is there anything in the course that you had to not push against, but, you know, you know, like you were quoting Marianne Williamson saying about chucking the book across the room. If you haven't done that, you're not a student. Was there... Um, was there something that you can look back on that stopped the cogs from moving that you had to like go with or? Um, I did hide the book for a while. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> about my second year in, um, I uh, well had gotten into a new relationship after my divorce. And uh, then I thought, well, I don't need spirituality. So I, I put the book in a uh, it was a laundry basket but it was actually a basket that was filled with magazines and things like that so uh after about six months when the relationship didn't uh work out i went hunting back for the book again and haven't put it down since mm -hmm. but um i um i think sometimes the the idea of sin and guilt still mm -hmm. are hard for me to really comprehend 
um, and I, I, I sometimes struggle in trying to explain it because sometimes there's things that I can read and I get it for me, but I don't know that I am able to explain it as well to others as I would like to. So I, you know, I, I really, um, really try. And that's one of the reasons that in my classes, I'm always, I always ask, did that make sense? Does, do you understand that? Because again, it might make sense to me, but it may not make sense to the person I'm speaking to. Mm -hmm. Because language is a living thing and <laughs> symbols are so unique, which is why metaphors in the course are absolutely fantastic. Because I just think <clears throat> if I said to you, oh, look at that lovely green field, you know, you might have something in your memory where that happened in a green field where someone got hurt or it might not be a pleasant association whereas if you can use a metaphor and create a scenario that someone can engage with in their mind then I think the scope for finding your sweet spot in that spectrum and somebody else finding it just makes so much sense really right and just right. putting something on one definition well we're down to a minute my dear down to a minute so thank you very much Thank you. That I can uh, ask you to do another chat like this because I've still got my list over here, which has oh. got plenty of other things on there too. We have plenty of time. <laughs> Amazing. So let me know. Thank you so much. Tell you why it was lovely meeting her and, and also your little furry child. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we'll speak again soon. And thank you for being in my life. Likewise. Hey, I get to say namaste to you. Stay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Have a good evening. Bye bye. Bye.